Hi, Seth. Hello. Okay. So, Seth, you're a founder of Mibo. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So, have, you have 20 million users. Uh, well, we reach 45 million unique users worldwide right now around the web every month. 45 so, 45. Million. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, uh, how is it going right now? Is it recession proof? Um, <laughs> It's going pretty well. The advertising stuff that we're doing is working very well. We get about a 1% click rate on, on Mebo, which is nice. And then once a user clicks on that ad, they spend about a minute and 35 seconds with the content. Uh, so advertisers like that, right? Like in this market, I think they really want good performance. Uh, and so we really target brands. And we go to the brand and we say, hey, we can give you an ad in social media that really works with a very high click rate and very high engagement. And I think that makes it interesting, even in this market. And so if you have a site, a network, social networking site, I can put the Mebo chat on it. Yep. You also have this white label where you put your ads and yep. help me monetize. Yep, so we can embed Mebo in your site. It will instantly give you live chat and presence in your site based on your social graph. We'll run our ads in it, and then we'll do revenue shares with uh, with our partners. So when did you launch? Two years ago? Uh, no, we're th we're actually three and a half years old now. It feels like oh, <laughs> yeah, stuff. we're a mid 05 company. How did you? Yeah. What do you think were the key you know things that got you the growth? Was it viral, word of mouth? Did yeah, you advertise a lot. You didn't. Uh, we did no advertisement, and there was nothing actually inherently viral about Mebo when we first launched. Um, I think the biggest thing was someone would find Mebo in like their school's, you know, internet room, their computer room in school, yeah. and then someone else would see someone on Mebo and like, wait, how do you get on that thing? Uh, and so then friends would just tell friends. So we found all of our growth was just viral, where you know kids would start using it in school, or you know, like on the Queen Mary two, the cruise ship, right? They have a sign up that says, if you want to use IM, use Mebo. Wow. Right, and so people just started doing that. Our friend of mine, uh, who's in Nairobi right now, he just IM'd me this morning. He's like, "I just found a Mebo user in the wild," and I was like, "Where?" And he was like, uh, "At the university in Nairobi." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, that's cool." Uh, so we just we just find it spreads by word of mouth because friends tell friends, "Hey, get on this thing; it gets you on IM." And then that's kind of for Mebo.com. Our stuff that embeds in other people's sites, uh, it's just website. Right when we launched Mebo. Other people who ran websites came to us and said, hey, you guys can do live chat, and that's very non-core for me. So if you can just give me your technology in my site, right? Just I don't want to do the live chat thing. I want to do my thing that's really core. So you do live chat for me. And so we just found people very quickly taking Mebo technology and putting it into their websites to power live chat. And so that's where that came from. So now you know folks like Addicting Games, My Yearbook, Flickster, uh, IGN, AvrilLevine.com, they all either have launched or will shortly launch Mebo in their sites to power live chat and presence for them. So how about free versus paying? You, you've been free since launch, right? Yep, we have. And in a recession time like this, you would advise a, an entrepreneur to start free again uh, or just like more of a paying model? You, you could have pro versions as well. You, and you could. Charge and, but you want the free model, right? Yeah, we, you know, we always felt like we could make advertising really work with Mebo. Uh, there are some things that are unique about the way Mebo's used, where you know we have very, very long session times. Like our average user spends almost two hours per day with us, and so with such long session times, we felt like we could get very high click rates. And if you can do high click rates, then I think advertising can be very, very effective. Um, and so we found now advertising working extremely well. We've only been in the market for about eight, nine months. Um, but our avenue, kind of our revenue ramp rate is fantastic for where we are. Uh, so right, we're just, so we're very yeah. excited about it. Yeah. Free first, if it doesn't work I think you just get a lot of adoption if you're free. You know, there's someone who, I don't remember who it was, they recently did a guest post, it might have been on TechCrunch, about uh, how they had a free iPhone app. And then they tried to charge for it. And I think their uh, take up rate dropped by literally uh, like 4x, wow. right? Just killed their adoption. And so if you can find a model that's free where it's advertising supported, that's great. But you know, something that we did on ads that I think worked well is we treated ads like a product, right? It wasn't like, oh, we have to do ads now, so let's grab you know, Google AdSense and throw it into Mevo. It was, hey, how do we make ads a fundamental part of the experience where we don't annoy users with ads, but rather ads somehow add to the experience, right? And so you can't get, I don't think, a 1% click rate without actually having ads that users like in some way. And so I'd say that our users, like we just did this takeover uh, ad, a whole new unit for Mebo where the entire background becomes an ad. And we were worried that users, like this time, they really wouldn't like it. So we put out a blog, we said, hey guys, this is a new unit, we're testing it for the first time. 
you know, we need money to fuel innovation at Mevo. Well, that's what okay case tell these to the users. Yeah. yeah, oh, absolutely tell the users that, right? Tell them why you're doing what you're doing. And we got, uh, in two days, 400 comments on that blog post. And the users uniformly, 380 of the 400 were, this isn't intrusive, it doesn't hurt the experience, oh wow, I checked out what Super Pages was because of this, you know, totally understand that you guys need to make money, it was incredibly positive. So you have a community then, if you have 400 comments on blog posts, oh, you yeah. have a user community? Oh, oh absolutely, How yeah. You start? Because I thought it was more like, either people using Mevo with their friends, or with their community, but you have also a Mevo community. Well, it's that, um, We've, from the start, been very careful to talk to and engage with our users, right? So uh, in Mebo, when you log in, our blog comes up as one of the main things on the screen. So a lot of our users, you know, we have 1.5, 1.6 million unique users a day who log into Mebo.com. Wow. Um, and our users, uh, all of them get our blog, right? So if we put something on the blog, it gets a lot of distribution very quickly. So if we want to have a chat with the users and say, hey, it's a new kind of ad unit, we don't know what you'll think, but this is why we're doing it, right? Like we basically said, look, ads tend to suck, right? We literally said ads, ads suck around the web. They stop you, stop you from doing what you want to do. We're trying to do an ad that you will see, but that won't hurt your experience. So let us know what you think. Do you have a chat room for Mebo users, which is always open so that they um, can complain? And there, are, there are hundreds of chat rooms inside Mebo.com. There are for where they can talk. There are forums at Mebo.com, forum.mebo.com, where they can talk back to us. Every blog posting that comes up every time someone loads Mebo has a comment link at the bottom. So we're doing everything we can to always let our users talk to us, right? And if they are, like, you know, we'll put out, for example, we just put out a new feature. We made status messages yep. more available inside Mebo. Uh, the user said, great, but you forgot to carry over my saved away messages when you move the status messages. We we're like, oh man, we messed that up, right? So five days later, because the users told us, hey, I want my saved away messages back, we had it back in the product, right? So we instantly, like once we saw users saying that, we put out an update to our blog posting. We said, hey guys, we saw that a lot of you want this back. We'll get it done very quickly. And five days later, it was back. So having that kind of constant communication with your users, whether you're a utility or a community or a content site, I'd argue in all cases, you really want that constant kind of communication and back and forth with Did your you users. Did you do something that really like, like, like got them upset one day? Um, you know, it's all relative. We've never done something that is really like, boom, everybody's just like hit us hard. It'll be smaller things that affect a certain community. So my guess is only five, 10% of our users actually used the saved away message. Right. But when we took them away, that particular community inside Mebo felt very impacted, right? And so we want to keep Mebo really great for everybody. And so we put them back in. It was a very, you know. So, it, so what's coming? Tell me the secret stuff. Um, <laughs> well, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. What's um, the secret roadmap? Yeah. Uh, the stuff that I think I'm probably most excited about right now is where we're using Mebo's community IM to get embedded on all these partner sites where we can just turn presence on and we can turn live chat on for our partners. And we're gonna do some really exciting stuff there, not just around live chat, not just around uh, like let's talk to each other, have presence, but really deep things around like sharing, interesting monetization stuff. It's gonna get really interesting how we're going to bring kind of live social interactions to our partner sites. And it's all real time, which I think is Cool. And outside of Mebo, what's exciting? Oh, I don't know, you know, flying. Are you, so. <laughs> Are you a business angel? What's that? Uh, the, you know, the only uh, the co only company I've put just a little bit of uh, money into is Fitbit. I think it's really cool. If people know what Fitbit is. It's a uh, it's a little device that you can wear, and oh, when yeah. you walk around, it'll measure your activity. It tells you how much fat you lost. Yep, it, it tells you how many calories you've burned. You can compete with people. Uh, and I just think it's awesome. So like you and I could have, uh, either we could compete or we could cooperate and be like, hey, let's see if we can walk from San Francisco to LA today. So Fitbit, wow. I think looks, it was just so cool when I saw it. I was like, hey, that's pretty awesome. I'd love to help you guys out a little bit. Cool, well, good luck, thanks, Seth. Yeah, no problem, thank you. So we you. don't send you, we don't ask uh, the entrepreneurs to send you business plans, and so <laughs> you're not investing. No, not really, not really an investor. Cool, thanks, Seth, <laughs> good luck. Take care.